So we are now recording. You want to go ahead and invite everyone to the room? I'm going to mute. Okay. All righty, welcome everybody. We're very excited to have you here with us. It looks like we have uh, 60 plus people and counting. So thank you for coming out here this evening uh, to our virtual course selection night. Uh, we're really looking forward to talking to you a little bit here this evening. Despite the circumstances, I think by this point in the year, uh, we're feeling pretty comfortable with Zoom, probably more comfortable than we've ever wanted to be, uh, but we're really looking forward to sharing some important information with you. Uh, if you haven't already, just make sure that as a participant, uh, if your mute option is there, please go ahead and mute yourself. Uh, we are recording this just in case anyone is unable to be here with us tonight. Um, the way we are going to move forward uh, with questions and answers, uh, we'd ask that you keep your questions either to yourself until the end, or if you'd like to share them, um, I'm trying to see if the chat feature is enabled. If the chat feature is enabled, you may put your question there, but we're gonna wait until the end to really address any questions uh, because as we walk through, what we find sometimes is that our questions are typically answered for the most part as we go through our presentation. Uh, we design it that way, so we hit most of the key information as we go, but people always have questions and that's partially why we are here. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for being here tonight. I'm going to go ahead and do some introductions. Uh, my name is Adam Oldham. I am one of the three high school counselors. Uh, you may see here displayed on my screen, we have three other people with us. Uh, the other two high school counselors are uh, Mrs. Christina Zeller and Mrs. Hillary Miller. Uh, we are the three that are at the high school. We are also privileged to have uh, Ms. Diane Libby with us from the middle school as well. Uh, so if any of you are uh, middle school parents of eighth graders preparing to jump up to high school. Uh, we're excited to have her here with us as well. So just a little bit of a overview of who all is on the team. There are we school counselors. Uh, we also have administrators with us as well. Um, we're grateful at the high school to have three administrators. We have Mr. Jonathan Booker as our high school principal. Uh, you've probably been receiving a number of communications from him. Uh, Mr. Dan Peck and Ms. Trish Co Mrs. Cr Trish Kozier are our two assistant principals. And just like we at counselors split up students by alphabet uh, and grade level, our two assistant principals also work with different grade levels. And so uh, this rising eighth grade cohort uh, will be working with Mrs. Kozier. And then we three counselors will split this cohort as they rise to ninth grade. As you'll see here by our names, we split the class of 2025 in ninth grade by alphabet. That way they have all three of us working together with the whole cohort, uh, more support, more eyes on the, the whole group. And we're working with all of the teachers to help facilitate that high school transition. You'll see then that we also each as counselors take a cohort and follow them then all the way through the rest of high school. And so, uh, this current ninth grade class that's at the high school will be coming to me next year, uh, the class of 2024, and I'll be working with them in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Uh, and you'll see that uh, next next year's, I guess, rising juniors will be with Mrs. Zeller, and all of our seniors next year will be with Mrs. Miller. And so uh, the following year, if you're an eighth grade parent here tonight, um, Mrs. Miller will be the long-term counselor for your students, but as I mentioned, all three of us work with students uh, in ninth grade. We're also grateful, as I mentioned, to have Mrs. Libby here, and another name that we like to reference is Mrs. Lonis. Christy Lonis is our counseling office secretary at the high school. A phenomenal human being, incredibly efficient, and if you have any questions or are having difficulties finding an answer, please call into the high school, get over to the counseling office. If she can't answer it for you or find one of us, I mean, she's gonna find you the answer that you need. So we're really grateful to have her as part of our team as well. An overview of what we're planning to do here this evening. Uh, we're gonna go over a couple of key pieces of information. I'm gonna talk with you a little bit here about academic planning and the EP Pathfinders program. Course selection fits into the whole process of preparing students kindergarten to 12th grade for the world after. Um, just hearing a little bit of feedback there. If you're joining us here for the first time, the last moment, we ask everybody please mute so that we can continue. We are recording this. Uh, 
Uh, so after we talk a little bit about the academic planning process, we're going to share a little bit of information about our program of studies, a great resource for you and your students to review as you prepare to plan. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the mechanics of high school scheduling and course selection. And then we're going to walk you through step by step how the actual inputting of courses work using the collection form. Uh, just hearing again, let's see here if I can. Yeah, all right. We have a couple of special opportunities we'll share with you as we move along as well. So the EP Pathfinders program, one of the questions or comments we get a lot uh, over the years from parents is that they feel like, you know, man, does anyone ever talk to my kid about the future? Does anyone ever talk to my student about the world after high school? Uh, you know, one of the things that it's almost a cliche is that parents or as people get older, they'll say, I wish they taught me this in high school. We at East Pensboro want you as parents to know that we do teach those things to students in school. Uh, kindergarten through 12th grade, we're working with students to help them answer these three key life questions. Who am I? Where am I going? And how do I get there? Who am I meaning what are my unique talents, gifts, interests, abilities? We want students to find out what they like, what they're good at, and how they can use that in a way that's productive and fun. Where am I going? What kind of lifestyle do I wanna have for myself? Depending on student goals, if they wanna travel, if they wanna have a certain kind of car, or they wanna have a family or a certain level of independence, we help them understand the kind of lifestyle decisions they need to make as they do planning for their future to make sure that that is realistic and can happen. And then of course, how do we get there? We talk to students a lot about the process of getting through elementary, middle, high school, onto whatever that next step is, whether it's becoming a surgeon and spending four years in college for a bachelor's degree, four years in medical school, and three to five years in residency, or it's going and getting a training certificate from HACC or a local uh, training provider, whatever that process is, we help students identify how they get there. And we do this with students from kindergarten up through 12th grade. And we have a lot of different programs we do. If you're a younger parent, this and last year, we started implementing a program called Smart Futures where we do career education with students K to eight. Um, kindergarten through fifth grade is really more about learning about work in the world after school. So it's more about awareness. Uh, career exploration really starts to take place in middle school. Uh, where we help students start to tie those individual talents and skills and interests into possible future plans. And by the end of middle school in eighth grade, uh, our counselor works with the eighth grade cohort in classroom lessons to help them identify a career pathway choice. It's not a binding choice. It's simply a decision to help students understand how they can start to map out their high school course selection right off the bat in ninth grade so they can get the most bang for their buck uh, with their course selection. And we'll talk a little bit about how that works in a moment. High school is all about planning, preparation, and entrepreneurship. We really help students learn not just how to do school stuff, but how to apply their school and academic skills to life and work. Uh, we help them learn how to market themselves effectively, whether they're trying to apply to get into a college, whether they're looking for a job, whether they're trying to get into the military. We help students learn how to best advocate for themselves and show themselves off in a way that's uh, really effective. We do this by partnering with a number of community organizations. We're very grateful to have a relationship with Cumberland Perry Area Vocational Technical School or VOTEC. Uh, we have a number of students that go there each year. Uh, we're very grateful for the relationship we have with them. And we work with students in eighth and ninth grade to expose them to opportunities there. We would normally, in a non-COVID year, take students over, help them visit, go through some of the shops. Uh, but Ms. Libby has been working with the virtual tour to help get students some of that information, uh, which has been great. All of our 10th graders take the ASVAB to get an idea of what military careers can look like. And we have members of the armed forces come in and do interpretation sessions with students so that they can tie in how they performed on the ASVAB uh, to different kinds of careers and different kinds of possibilities that maybe their course selection could help inform. Our 11th graders all take the PSAT uh, to help give them an idea of where they're at and their college readiness, if that's something that they're interested in or not interested in and just wanna get a gauge of maybe where they're at in comparison to their peers across the country. 
and that then also provides free practice for the SAT that's tailored to how students answer. Uh, unfortunately, due to the closure, uh, we had to reschedule our activities with Junior Achievement uh, that were scheduled for today, but we also partner actively with Junior Achievement. Uh, they come in and help us with activities really across the whole uh, K-12 to spectrum. And so I show you this, and we want to show you this right off the bat to help you as parents and families know course selection is not something that happens in a vacuum. Yes, adults are talking to your children about what the future is like and how they can tie in their uniqueness to something great after they graduate. And it really is part of a comprehensive process that all of our students at East Pensboro get to participate in. We're very proud of that. This matters because a lot of students across Pennsylvania graduate high school and go on to something. Uh, whatever that post-secondary plan is, a lot of them go on to a two or a four-year college. Um, but unfortunately, and this is not a Pennsylvania problem alone, a lot of people end up going to college, but either drop out before finishing or they end up taking way too long to finish and they end up in debt. They end up taking more time than they needed to get started. And we want to avoid that. Uh, there are more than enough Pennsylvanians walking around college credits and no degrees to show for it at this point in time. We don't want any of our East Pennsboro students doing that. We want our students to step out of, out of school the day after graduation with a plan so that the first time they start that journey, it's the right time and they don't become a statistic. And so that's our goal through this whole process. We want students to be prepared for what comes next as soon as possible. I mentioned career pathways. This is how career pathways and all of that career education and planning ties into course selection. At the high school a few years ago, all of the teachers got together and we evaluated all the courses we offer and we organized them into career pathway maps to help students pick classes uh, beyond just picking something that sounds fun, something that a friend might be taking or, oh, I heard this teacher's cool. Those are important things and we love that students love our teachers. We love that students love each other. Um, you know, we obviously want school to be fun but we want students to get the most out of their high school experience. And so we have 12 different career pathways and I'll show you an example of one of these maps next that students use. So for example, if a student's interested in health sciences, health sciences is the top career our students are interested in uh, as they, they come into high school, it's the top career they say they're going into as they graduate. We can help students right off the bat here coming into ninth grade plot out what four years of high school East Pensboro course selection can look like. That way, there's no stress year to year. They kind of anticipate what's coming, and it's all laid out here for them. And so, for example, if they're interested in becoming a nurse or going on to uh, work in healthcare, we would recommend that they take our anatomy and physiology class in their junior year. We've had students that take that class and fall in love with the body, fall in love with health and science and all that good stuff that goes into that. And that's great. We've also had students that take that class that find this really isn't for me. I'm really just not enjoying this like I thought I would. And so all they've really lost was a little bit of time, free experience for them to have some time with a great teacher, seeing if they liked something and seeing if they were good at something. It was an opportunity to make a life decision for free. And so this is an example of what one of those maps look like. And these maps are also included in our program of studies uh, that we will be sharing out with you as well, so you can see this. All right, and now I'm going to turn it over to one of our other counselors to talk a little bit about the mechanics of scheduling. Hello, everyone. Mr. Oldham, could you just make yeah. sure everyone's mic's muted? I think there might be a couple people who aren't muted, just so we don't get any feedback. Okay, so this first slide here that I'm gonna discuss with you, this is the mechanics and the nitty gritty of how scheduling works at the high school. Um, for some of you upper class parents, you're well aware of this, um, but for the incoming ninth grade parents next year, at the high school, students earn a total of seven credits max each year. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. We do follow a semester schedule just like um, most schools do in the area and similarly like the middle school, we have seven classes a day or seven credits. Some full year classes are mainly your core classes like your math, science, English, social studies. 
a student will have a, have their math class the same period all year long. So that would be a full year class. Any full year classes are worth one credit and any semester based class is worth a half a credit. The only um, class that we currently offer that's not either a full year class or semester based is our like our gym class and our health classes. They are each worth 0.25 credits and they kind of alternate on an other day, every other day schedule. So um, ninth grade health and ninth grade PE or phys ed, those would total together a half credit. As your students are talking with you and their teachers about what classes they wanna take next year, um, many of the core classes, as I mentioned, require teacher recommendations. So your teachers, um, currently, even the eighth grade students, I know Miss Libby has talked with the students or, or she will be talking with them. Students will be talking with their teachers about what level of courses they wanna take next year. So for example, if a, if a ninth grader is currently in academic English and they wanna try the 10th grade honors English class, they need to be having that conversation with their current English teacher about that recommendation for next year. So we really do put a lot of stock in teacher recommendations because the teachers spend a lot of time with your students and have a good idea of their capabilities. Um, so for those core courses, teacher will, teachers will be making recommendations for your students. Some classes require prerequisites. So a prerequisite is just a course that prior to taking that course, you have to have had another course. So there are several of those at the high school level um, we do have a program of studies guide that will outline every single course and will let you know what prerequisites you know, are required for each of the different courses. So when your students, later in the presentation, Mrs. Eller is gonna show you how um, students actually log into their own individual Sapphire accounts to do their course requests for next year. And there are certain circumstances where um, your students can make a special request to take a class. Um, and Mrs. Zeller will discuss that a little bit later. It'll make a little bit more sense. So us school counselors are available now to your students. I know we're all unfortunately learning virtually right now, but um, most of our days are filled with Zooming and phone calls with students to talk about course selection. I know I've had a ton of uh, calls today about that. So we're here for you, for your students now and in the future. We also will be available this summer to dis discuss uh, scheduling questions. Um, the deadline to complete all schedule changes for students this year is August 12th of this summer. So please know that when um, the master schedule comes out, hopefully this spring, your student still has time to change their mind if they wanna take something else. That schedule change deadline that we usually are pretty firm about this year, this summer will be August 12th. And then make sure your students and you are encouraging them to discuss any possible summer requirements for any honors or AP classes. So, um, you know, whatever class they're wanting to take for next year, if there's any summer work, which um, I think this year, most of the classes aren't gonna require summer work, but they may require or recommend some summer reading. So your students um, might have to do some reading or optional reading this summer that will help prepare them for that. Okay, next slide, Mr. Oldham. This is just a visual timeline of how this course selection process works. As Mr. Oldham mentioned, this is not just something that starts one day and ends the next. This is kind of something we've been talking to students about all year long. Um, tonight, you'll see here that the parent night is listed earlier today during advisory period. So that middle part of the day for um, the current eighth grade parents who aren't sure what that is. We have a chunk of time in the middle of the day where teachers are assigned the same group of students. Today during advisory, all of our high school students um, watched a very similar pre-recorded presentation that we're giving to you all right now. So they, would have, they will have heard the same thing after today. Next week, as I mentioned in the previous slide, your students should start talking to their teachers about what classes they wanna recommend for next year. So they have all of next week to do that, to talk to their teachers about the level of courses they'd like to take for next year. And then, um, the course request form. So this is the form that can be found in the individual student's Sapphire portal that 
students will use to schedule classes or request to schedule classes for next year. And as I mentioned, Mrs. Zeller is gonna show you step-by-step -step how to do that. Um, so that course request form for students is going to open Friday, January 29th, and all weekend of that weekend leading up to Monday, February 1st, your students will be able to log in and request classes that they wanna take for next year. This is normally done during the school day, but due to COVID and um, you know, the different learning platforms, we just thought it would be um, easier for parents and students to do this together over the weekend so that you can sit down um, with your student and say, hey, what are you requesting for, for next year? Let me see and kind of look over their shoulder and get an idea of what they're wanting to request for next year. And again, remember, these are just requests for students. So this is not your student's exact schedule. We can't ever guarantee they're gonna get everything they want. We try our best when the master schedule is built to accommodate students. Um, so just make sure that whatever your student is wanting to take next year, that that's reflected on that form, because um, that's really important. And, Mrs. Miller, just yeah. a second here. One of the pieces of, or questions that we often will get about course selection <laughs> is, can we have like a list of all the classes that a ninth grader could take uh, as opposed to looking at the whole program of studies? Uh, one of the nice things about being able to see these course request forms in Sapphire at home is that any course that's available to your student will be on that sheet. And so as you're looking at that sheet together, anything that they might be interested in taking will be available right there. Uh, and so for those who are wondering, well, what can my 10th grader take next year? All, all those courses will be available to see on that form and you'll have that whole weekend to look through it together uh, before finalizing a submission. Yes, thanks Mr. Oldham for adding that. And then another thing that goes along with this is as you're sitting down with your student to um, help them with their requests, at the end, before they submit their final requests, there's an option for them to save their request as a PDF. And we really encourage your student to do that so that they have, so you have it and they have it to reference. If they can't remember what they requested for next year, you'll have that PDF saved to your computer or their Chromebook to be able to reference after the fact. So again, the little graphic at the bottom, you know, feedback from us school counselors, we're here to help and have conversations. We encourage them to talk to you. You guys know your, your students and um, your children better than we do. Um, and then also your teachers. So it's a collaborative effort. We want your students to um, collaborate with all of us to help make them help them make the best decisions. Mrs. Miller, could I just sure. jump in here for one second? Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to let any eighth grade parents know that um, all of your students were provided a presentation similar to this one last Wednesday and Thursday on the, one of their Google um, Classroom pages. It's their history Google Classroom. They have the presentation, a practice form so that they could actually practice what they're gonna do on their course request form. And there is a list of all required courses and their levels and a list of all elective courses. So if parents want to watch that presentation with their students, they can do that and that will um, help them to know what their students have been um, provided to help them to select their courses. Perfect. Thank you. I think we're ready for the next slide, Mr. Oldham. So on this slide, this is um, mainly relevant for our current parents of juniors. These are, um, this is a list of four unique opportunities available to seniors for next year. The first is the health career internship program that's offered through Holy Spirit. And there is an application for that. Um, so current juniors would be eligible to fill out an application and then potentially if they were accepted um, for this program for next year as a senior. Um, we partner with Holy Spirit Hospital and they have different rotations within um, the hospital that students who are interested in the health healthcare fair get, get the opportunity to participate in. I think historically we have, I think, three students every year that have, you know, the ability to do this. So it, it can be something that's pretty competitive. So if your student is interested in this, um, have them reach out to us counselors, or if when we're back in the building, have them stop into the counseling office and pick up an application for that. Mr. Studer 
one of our special education teachers, he helps kind of coordinate that. So they could also email Mr. Suter with specific questions. And then we also are partnering with Cumberland Perivo Tech. They have an emerging health professions um, opportunity for seniors next year, very similar to the health career internship. Um, but this one in particular, students take college classes. I know in the past we've partnered or Cumberland Perry has partnered with Messiah College to take some courses there. So that's also another opportunity in the health career profession for, for students for next year. And then in um, the senior year as well, um, we have students who can do co-op or work experience. So for example, um, let's say your student has a job at a local, um, let's, whoops, looks like somebody has hacked our presentation. Mr. Oldham, are you gonna try to bring that up again? There we go, thank you. So the work experience there, that is an opportunity for students who have a job already lined up at the start of next school year as a senior and they can have classes at East Penn in the morning and then leave after lunch or before lunch and um, they can go to their job and work and get credit for that. So that's good for students who, you know, maybe aren't sure their senior year, year if there are any electives that they're interested in taking and they just really want to start entering the workforce and make some money. They can take classes with us in the morning and then um, leave and go work and um, make money and get credit for it. So, Mr. Oldham, are you going to try to bring the presentation up again there? I am. We, uh, Mr. Fitz, whoever you are, uh, you are not welcome. Uh, so stop that if that was you. I'm uh, looking to see where I can shut off the annotation. So just, uh, okay. just a moment here. I'm looking to see where I can do that. Hmm. Uh, One good thing through all this, we're gonna post this presentation, um, the PowerPoint slides for you on our website along with a bunch of other items. So um, just know that that's a backup to this as well. Okay, so here is the last slide. Um, that I'm gonna be covering with you. Actually, I have one more after this. So here are some tools to help you. And again, this is just kind of reiterating what I've said already. Us school counselors are here to help your students have these conversations about what courses they might wanna take and how that aligns with their future um, career goals. They have their teachers who are gonna be making recommendations, feedback from parents and guardians, the program of studies guide that kind of lists, that I mentioned that lists every single course and what the course is about, if there are any prerequisites, how many credits students get um, by taking that course. So that's something you'll definitely want to reference as your students that weekend are um, requesting classes for next year. And again, if you have any questions about courses, even if it doesn't seem clear in that program of studies, just email one of us counselors and we'll be happy to talk with you about it. And then lastly, the career pathway maps that Mr. Oldham um, referenced earlier. And then the last slide that I'm gonna cover, this is just some upcoming announcement stuff for parents for you to be aware of. Next week on Tuesday, January 26th, we are hosting and offering the PSAT NMSQT, which is the practice exam um, for all 11th grade students. Your students don't have to sign up or register for that as the district is paying for that for all students. That's an opportunity that we give them every year. It will take place at the high school beginning at 7.30 in the morning it will, and will last approximately four hours until about 11.30. So since we have a lot of different st students learning in different modes, we have some students that are fully virtually right now, transportation will be provided for any student who is learning from home or maybe um, is a group A student who's only in person on Monday and Wednesdays, transportation will be provided and offered to and from school the day of that exam. Um, and please make sure your students bring a calculator with them 
and get a good night's sleep and eat some breakfast that morning. Then the very next day, um, the ASVAB, ASVAB exam will be offered to all 10th graders. So the format is very similar in that it takes, you know, approximately three and a half hours. It'll start again at 7.30 in the morning. It will take place in the high school and transportation will be provided again for that. And then lastly, lastly the PSAT 10, which is the practice SAT for 10th grade students. There is a small fee for that. It's usually 16, 17, $18, depending on the year. Um, students must register for that. So we won't be offering that for, to every 10th grader, but if a student is interested, they can email Mrs. Lonis in the counseling office or one of us counselors and um, get their name down um, for that exam. That will take place February 24th and the registration deadline, we're asking your student if they're interested to, to notify us before February 7th. And I think that's it. And then Mrs. Eller is going to walk you through um, how to actually schedule and request courses. Good evening, everyone. Um, so as Mrs. Miller mentioned, we just wanted to take the time to give you step-by-step -step instructions um, for what to expect when you are actually filling out that course request form. Um, and as a reminder, the course request form will be open from Friday, uh, January 29th through Monday, February 1st until 11.59 p.m. So you'll have that weekend to complete this with your students. So the first step that you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the district homepage. So that's epasd.org. And once you get to that homepage, you will scroll down to the link for Sapphire. Uh, click on that link for Sapphire and then head to the community portal where you will then be asked to fill in your student's login information. Um, on this next page, uh, you will see that you'll have to select course request form um, under the student backpack on the left-hand side um, of your student Sapphire portal. And then that will bring you to a page where you'll click in the center here, fill out course request form. This next page is actually where you will begin to complete your course requests. Um, students will see in the upper right hand corner, the total number of credits that they are uh, requesting. So they'll be checking off the courses that they want to take and the, in the upper right hand corner, uh, it'll total those, those number of credits as to how many courses they've selected so far. You'll want this total to be seven credits when you're done, because um, that is the maximum number of credits a student can schedule for the school year. On this page, you'll see that courses highlighted in green signify that these were courses recommended by the student's current teacher in that subject area. Um, and I think Mrs. Miller mentioned this before about special requests. I'll explain that further on this slide. Um, if a student wishes to override a teacher's recommendation, um, they will need to click on the special request button and fill in what level course they would rather take. So for example, if your teacher has uh, recommended you for English 10 academic, but you are choosing to take English 10 honors, you will click on the special request button and you will say that I would rather take English 10 honors. And that will then um, kind of report out to us counselors to check in with the student um, to discuss you know, why they've overridden the teacher's recommendation. This page uh, shows you that those courses highlighted in red are courses um, that require a prerequisite. So for example, um, you know, if you are, are scheduled to take Algebra 1, um, based on your teacher's recommendation, but you're trying to take Algebra 2, you can't take Algebra 2 until you've already taken Algebra 1. So any courses that require a prerequisite uh, will be highlighted in red to, 
to um, notify you that you aren't eligible to take that course because it requires a prerequisite. We ask that students uh, select a total of three, or at a minimum, three alternate uh, courses in addition to their seven credits. Um, this is to just help us uh, figure out what other additional classes a student may be interested in taking if they aren't able to schedule their primary choice um, seven credits. Um, so for example, if your student's first choice elective was art one, um, but they weren't able to schedule that into the scheduler, um, maybe they would put an alternate of crafts or drawing and painting. And then the, the scheduler will automatically pick from those alternate courses to try and see if those alternates then fit in your student's schedule. It's always nice to have alternates rather than us filling in a student's holes in their schedule um, because then we can ensure that they're getting a course that they um, are interested in. This is Mr. Oldham just hopping on here again. Uh, when it comes to course selection, sometimes around this time of year, students will come and say, oh, I don't wanna take a class or I never signed up for that. Um, we know that life happens and people select things and they change their minds. Like this is something that's saved in Sapphire for us. And so if they misplace it or don't remember what they picked, we do have these recorded for us in Sapphire. And when they click the submit button, they'll be able to save a PDF of all of these as well so that they'll be able to look at this with you uh, in case for whatever reason, they forget what electives or core courses they selected. Yes, and I guess before we switch to the next slide, um, what I should also point out is that an alternate course cannot also be the same as like a primary course. So those seven credits that you are uh, selecting as your primary courses, you cannot also include your alternates in those seven credits. A, a course cannot count for both. Um, then this is the final page where you can review the all the courses that you've uh, checkbox on the left, and then um, the alternates that you've checkbox on the right. Um, and at the bottom, it should total seven credits, as I mentioned before. And then you will click um, save course requests and it will save your uh, submission. So at this time, we just wanted to uh, take an opportunity to answer any questions that any of you may have but we ask that you maybe put them in the chat um, so that we can help monitor those in a more organized fashion um, just to make sure we get to everyone's questions. As people are putting their comments and questions in the chat, uh, we also are grateful tonight to have uh, Gunnery Sergeant Rainus with us from our NJROTC program. Uh, if you are on here, uh, I believe you are, would you mind popping your camera on and maybe speaking just a moment to our NJROTC program? Sure. I don't know if you guys can see me or not. Can you see me or is the camera turned away? I can see you fine. You seem okay. to be out of this world. All right, sweet. No, because I was actually, I'm on my phone right now, so. But um, yeah, just to talk a little bit about the program itself is, you know, it's a brand new program to the school, you know, what we, what we do in the program is it's not based solely on individuals that want to join the military itself. It is, you know, we're trying to build better citizens and leaders, you know, whether they decide if they want to, you know, join the military, go to college, or, you know, even just get a job after high school. It's to prepare them a little bit better as to, you know, just going through their normal high school career and, you know, actually giving them kind of a, a leg up on, you know, once they get out of school, you know, like I said, if they decide to join college or the military or, you know, even the workforce, they'll actually be looked at a little bit more compared to, you know, under other individuals that are just, you know, they don't have the same experiences as in the ROTC program itself. And, you know, once, once we get the program going a little bit more and, get back on a normal schedule itself. We'll be able to, you know, take field trips, do a lot of, 
team building exercises together and they'll have a have a lot more fun in the program and you know it just won't be them going through the motions of you know their normal high school career and one of the other benefits of the program as well is if they do decide that they want to go to college you know it actually looks good on their college resume as well so and I did have a chance to actually speak with the eighth grade students back in December for about 30 minutes or so. And I did have a few questions about the program itself. What is that? Can a student do or Did you see that question, Adam? Yes, I see that question. Can they do NJRTC only in their senior year? Is that the question? I um, believe it was. Yeah, the question to that, you can do NJROTC all four years of high school. Uh, and so it is not restricted to seniors only. Uh, any of our students can do it along the way. And we're actually looking forward to our first cohort of making it all the way through four years of it. Uh, so we had yes. quite a few students this year that, that came out. We're really proud of the work they've been doing, uh, but they can absolutely do it all four years. They're also able, and then the follow-up to that was, can they just do it for one year? Absolutely. If you get in and you give it a try and you're like, you know what, this was a life experience. I'm glad I did it. Or maybe I'm not glad I did it. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, we're not going to force you to do it the rest of high school if you try it and don't like it. Uh, however, like any of our classes, uh, we do not allow students to get in and spend a couple of weeks and then decide to change their mind and quit then uh, only because they would then be weeks behind in whatever other course we would try to put them in then thereafter. And so, yes, you absolutely can do this for one year. Uh, you can do it for two years, four years. Um, it's it's a really great immersive experience. And so, yes, you can do it any year of high school uh, as much as you want. Okay, hey, should we answer some of the other questions? Sure. It, okay. Oh, go Mrs. Ahead. Zeller, I had a, a, a parent private message me about dual enrollment. So I think that's something that I failed to, when we got hacked, I think I got flustered and didn't talk about dual enrollment. So Mr. Olam, I'm happy to talk about it or if you would like to talk about it since you're currently managing it for your seniors this year, it doesn't matter to me. Sure, let me uh, let me speak to that just a little bit um, because this year, like, I, like Mrs. Miller mentioned, I do have all of our seniors uh, I was incredibly proud of this cohort last year in their junior year when we started having these conversations with students and families. We really started to get the word out that dual enrollment is a, an incredible opportunity to save money. Um, students who are doing dual enrollment, what that means is you're enrolled in high school and you're also enrolled in a college or university at the same time. The biggest benefit to that is a college or university, primarily Hack, which is where most of our students do dual enrollment, uh, you get a discounted price for that. And that can be hundreds of dollars uh, in discounts over the course of the year. Um, this fall, we had, I think, you know, two dozen seniors complete about 120 credits of college uh, through Hack and Messiah and Harrisburg University. And we're incredibly proud of that. And all that's really done is drive up interest. Uh, we've got students doing stuff here this spring. So we're gonna have students graduating high school with you know, 15, 18 college credits, uh, which is essentially you know, a whole semester or almost a whole first year of college. Uh, they would have gotten at a significantly discounted rate. Uh, Mrs. Miller mentioned that a lot of our juniors are already reaching out to her and families are reaching out to her about this. We work very closely with Harrisburg, um, with Hack. Uh, Harrisburg Area Community College, which credits transfer anywhere. We work closely with Harrisburg University and Messiah. And so if you have questions about any of that, um, you can let us know, but we will likely direct you directly there as well um, because they have a lot of good questions and answers as admissions counselors that they wanna share with you. Um, just as another interesting piece about dual enrollment, uh, Central Penn actually right up the road from the high school is offering uh, dual enrollment opportunities as well this coming year. And so if you're interested in that, you can uh, participate in that. One of the questions that ties into dual enrollment that just popped up, uh, can students who go to Votech participate in that? Yes. In fact, a number of our students in their final or senior year, depending on their program, do go and participate in dual enrollment. Um, I know that as an example, we have students doing like the computer programming or the computer networking shops. Uh, they work very closely with Harrisburg University uh, in doing dual enrollment. And so we have a number of students that do dual enrollment credits through um, Pennsylvania College of Technology, 
so Votech has a lot of dual enrollment opportunities as well. Dual enrollment begins uh, in kind of two, two semesters, I and mean, we have a fall semester and a spring semester. Uh, and so students would schedule those classes um, through the university and then let us know what that looks like, and we will adjust their East Pennsboro schedule accordingly. Um, students do have to make sure they graduate with our graduation requirements intact as well. So for example, they can't not do an English class their senior year. They have to do an English class their senior year. If they do it at East Pennsboro, great. If they do an English class in the fall at Hack, great. Um, that's where the dual part also plays into this other question that came in about, do they count towards high school credits? Yes, um, college credits do factor into East Pennsboro credits. Um, the conversion rate is converted in this way, not because of a worth or value, it's just because of how much space it takes up on a schedule. Uh, a three credit college course would take up one half credit of a student's schedule. And so we would give them a half credit on their East Pennsboro schedule because it takes up one period of their day. Um, generally, you know, when we look at how COVID has affected things, we've done a lot of remote learning this year with, with our dual enrollment students, although they were doing that prior to COVID as well. So during the school day, if they're doing a dual enrollment English class through Hack, and it's gonna be period six, then they either come down to the counseling office or go to the library and they work independently on that class during that time. Um, so yes, those credits do count uh, towards East Pennsboro graduation as well. Uh, we have students, we had a student I think two years ago who was only at East Pennsboro to take their economics and personal finance class. Uh, they took everything else essentially full time through hack and graduated with like 23 credit, 24 credits, I think it was at the end of the year. And so students can begin dual enrollment in their senior year. Um, so if your current families of juniors, uh, reach out to Mrs. Miller, reach out to hack or any of these universities and get talking about that um, in terms of deadlines for that process. Um, we've had our college partners work with us right up until the semesters begin. And so if you're not sure, um, reach out and let us know. If you change your mind come August, I mean, let us know. We wanna give you the opportunities as best we can. Uh, so just keep us in the loop so we can advocate and support you through that process. Trying to think if there's any other dual enrollment related questions. Like I said, we primarily work with Hack. Uh, we do have students that do dual enrollment through Messiah University, Messiah University now, uh, Harrisburg University, uh, and then Central Penn is sort of new to this game as well coming up this year. Um, and hopefully uh, moving into next year, we'll be able to do some classes that will take place on campus. If classes do need to take place on campus and they're driving to hack or wherever they're going, we will make, uh, they may potentially need to take more than one period off of their schedule to allow for drive time, which all students as they go through high school, they schedule a total of 28 credits, seven credits a year. Um, they need as a minimum to graduate 25 credits. And so there is a little bit of wiggle room and dual enrollment is one of those examples of how that wiggle room can be used for a student's benefit um, when coming to dual enrollment. That way they don't have to just jam pack their schedule. Uh, they can have drive time if they need to do that. Okay, I think we have a number of questions here in the chat. So I'll just go ahead and start from the top. Um, the first question is, when does it go in effect? I'm assuming uh, the question is in reference to the course request forms. Um, they go into effect Friday, January 29th through Monday, February 1st until 11.59 p.m. Um, if I misinterpreted the question, please reiterate the question um, in and the chat. I'll just throw this out there because I did answer it privately to someone who asked. We do have some diligent parents and families here tonight, which is awesome. Uh, we did have a, a family notice, hey, the form I think is open. Uh, I closed that. Uh, we were testing that out today as we're working through the final uh, troubleshooting this week. And so the forms should not be open now, um, but they will be open as Mrs. Zeller mentioned on the 29th. Yes, and that was actually the next question. So good, uh, you answered that. Um, are electives planned out for grades? For example, a ninth grader couldn't take a 12th grade class. Um, that is true in some cases. If you reference our program of studies, which will be available 
I believe after tomorrow's board meeting, it's going to get approved for some edits that are last minute edits that are being done. But I believe it will be posted on Friday, the 22nd, I believe Mr. Moore told us. Um, you can reference that to see what electives are offered per grade level. Um, and and that'll tell, answer your question in terms of if they're available to a ninth grader or a 12th grader. But some electives certainly are available ninth or 12th grade. Um, the next question, my 10th grader wants to go to Cumberland, Vary, Cumberland Perry area of Votech and filled out the application. We received a letter from the school indicating an interview would be set up in January. When will those interviews be scheduled? I'll let me answer Miller. this one. Yeah, yeah, I can answer this one. So um, any student who applied to Votech for next school year um, should have received notification from Votech about interviews that are going to take place. Um, I haven't sent anything out just yet. I'm finalizing the interview schedule, but the interviews will take place all virtually. So regardless of how your student is learning, whether they're an AB student or live streaming, Votech is now conducting those interviews this year um, all virtually through Zoom. So, and they will take place uh, Monday and Tuesday mornings of Feb, so Monday, February 1st and Tuesday, February 2nd. So I will be reaching out individually with a phone call to every parent, letting them know, hey, your student's interview time is this, here's the Zoom link and here's how they'll get on. And here are some heads up questions that Votech might ask you to help them prepare. So those will take place on February 1st and 2nd between eight and 11 in the morning. So, yep. Um, the next question is also Votech related. It's when can Votech be started and if they do not like it, can they end it? Um, I can answer that as well. So um, Votech typically, most of their programs offered there are three-year programs. They do have a couple that um, you know, a student could do 11th and 12th grade year or just their senior year if they'd like. Um, but we treat that Votech commitment like we do any schedule change. So um, a student, if they decide like, hey, I'm going to do Votech, I, I got accepted and I'm accepting that position, it's an investment for us and for them. So if they say I'm going to do Votech next year, um, they're not locked into Votech for the rest of their high school career, but they are locked in for it for the duration of that school year. So we treat it the same as we would um, another student who's trying to switch classes during the school year. Unfortunately, once they make that commitment, they kind of have to stick it out for that year. But we do offer, if a student's like, I like Votech, but I just don't like this shop. It doesn't seem like a good fit and it doesn't, it's not what I thought it was gonna be. If they're interested in possibly switching to another shop and Votech says, oh yeah, we have openings in our nursing program, that student then could potentially switch programs. We just don't permit them to drop Votech completely. And the reason for that is, you know, we don't give partial credit for Votech. So, if a student you know, goes to Votech for half of a year and then for some reason wanted to drop out, we would not give them partial credit for that. So it's a commitment that, that they're making for that year then. It's also something, and Mrs. Miller may have alluded to this, we share Cumberland Perry Votech with I believe it's 13 total school districts in our area. And so we only get so many spots and we're very fortunate that the students that apply almost always, at least in our experience, get their first shop because we've got great students who are great applicants. Um, but every spot one of our students takes is a spot that a student elsewhere didn't get. And so we really want to honor the whole shared commitment of that process. And that's why we want to make sure as we're talking about this, that we're getting these decisions right the first time. Um, students have the ability to make adjustments in their schedule right up until August 12th. So Votech is going to do interest meetings and visits and tours and stuff. If you have any questions or concerns, or you're not sure if it's the right decision, there are plenty of opportunities for you to get out there and see if it's a good choice. Um, the next question pertains to the ASVAB tests. Um, all 10th graders, did they, do all 10th graders take this test? Have the students been given details and how this test will be administered next week? Um, my 10th grader is all virtual. Is there a plan for that? Um, so the ASVAB is given annually and it is Traditionally, we really encourage all of our 10th graders to take the exam. Um, in the 10th grade, it is uh, the results are not um, released to the military, so there's no like military solicitation, anything like that, if that's your concern. Um, it's strictly to 
uh, determine what a student's interests are and how they um, correlate with their skill set um, and help them to, you know, plan for future careers and potential majors in college. Um, but yes, we have, um, I think in the, the district newsletter, it's been said that the ASVAB, ASVAB exam will occur next week. But in terms of the details, I have posted to my Google Classroom. I actually have a Google Classroom for all of my sophomore students and I've released um, notifications through there. Um, and I believe as well, um, Caitlin Edger, our uh, district um, uh, uh, communications, her, Communic thank you, communications director, she will be releasing a um, notification with more detail about this on Friday. So you will get all those instructions. I believe we covered this in the beginning that transportation will be covered for students regardless of if your student is learning remotely or in the building. Um, so that will be provided for your student to and from school. And then Mrs. Zeller, I was kind of looking at the chat as you were answering that. I think we answered the next dual enrollment ones. The next question, um, do they have to, do students have to take a foreign language to graduate? And the answer to that is no. So that's not a requirement that we have at East Penn that students must take a foreign language. Um, yep, um, let's see. Uh, do current VOTEC students have to reselect VOTEC during course selection? Yes, if your current student is currently in VOTEC, when they do their course selection form um, on January 29th, that weekend when it opens, they will select their current VOTEC program. Um, for students who applied to VOTEC and are gonna participate in an interview on the 1st and 2nd of February, they don't know yet if VOTEC is accepting them as a student, so they would not select VOTEC. What happens is after the fact, after the VOTEC sends their notifications out of their acceptance letters, us counselors will check in with your students and say, hey, you got accepted. Do you wanna make this commitment for next year? And then we will go back and change their schedules and take out some electives to add in VOTEC after the fact. Um, so that's how that works. I believe the final um, question on the chat is if an 11th grader is scheduled for the SAT exam, do they still need to take the PSAT? Um, they aren't required to take the PSAT, but we would highly encourage it because it does serve as a practice exam for your student and um, it would just help them be all the more prepared for the SAT. Plus the PSAT 11 slash um, National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test is linked to just that, the National Mer Merit uh, Scholarship. So students that score uh, with very elite scores are um, eligible to potentially receive national merit scholarships. So we would highly encourage that your student participate, especially since the school district will be covering the cost of that as well. Um, I think that was all the questions in the chat. I believe we answered them all. Um, Can I just say a couple things, Mrs. Eller? I was thinking, um, so your students, if they didn't watch it today, um, this week they, in, during class or during advisory, they'll be watching um, course selection specific videos that were put together by the various departments in our, um, in, in our in school. So like the science department made a video about all the science electives that they're offering for next year. So your students should have watched that video or they will be watching it this week. I'm not sure if they did it today along with the course selection presentation that we just did with you guys. But um, so if you're wondering, well, like I thought tonight was gonna be about all the different courses. And again, those course offerings are all um, spelled out for you in the program of studies. And then also the videos that your students will watch um, outlined all of those new course offerings and, and what courses are offered in each subject area. Um, we will also post this presentation on the website. We will post the program of studies for you. Um, Cumberland Perry Votech also made a video for us to show you that we will post on our website about, you know, if you're an incoming parent of an incoming ninth grader and you want to know more about Votech or maybe your students in 10th grade and they want to apply to Votech. There'll be a little uh, short video that Mr. Flamini from Votech made that we'll also post to the website so you can reference that. Uh, just another, and then, uh, there was another question here. Um, 
there's two additional yeah. questions. Yeah. There's a question about if colleges have certain requirements that maybe the high school does not, will students be guided to take those classes? For example, if a college requires a foreign language, but we don't. This is why we said this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, as school counselors, we're not just here to help students push buttons and put things into a computer uh, when it comes to scheduling or to fix things. Uh, we are here as supports and coaches the whole way through. And so that's why we stay with our cohorts, uh, you know, 10 through 12, and we work with them starting in ninth grade. If students know that they wanna go to college, if they know they have a specific plan in mind, tell them to come and talk with us early and often. Uh, we have students and parents Zooming with us frequently to talk about specific details like this. Uh, there are thousands of colleges across the United States, and unfortunately, or fortunately, uh, not very many of them are the same. Uh, there are a lot of similarities, uh, but every place has its own little unique quirks and details and specific pieces. We will typically know the detailed information about how to answer questions about like the top 20, 30 schools our students apply to from East Pensboro. And we also know how to help you and your family and your student ask the right questions of the colleges that maybe we're not as familiar with. And so if you have any questions about that, you as families can email us as the counselors. We're happy to answer questions for you. You can have your students set up a Zoom appointment with us, uh, send us an email. This is what we do day in and day out. So, you know, school, part of why we got into school counseling was to help connect students to the right next step. And we get that course selection does play into that. Yes, if you don't take algebra one, algebra two and geometry, uh, you're going to have a hard time getting into a four-year college. Uh, if you skip your senior math class, it's going to be tough picking math up uh, your freshman year of college, if that's your plan. If college isn't your plan, we get that that kind of conversation may not fit for you, but that's why we meet with students individually in addition to these large group conversations. And so please reach out to us as uh, your student's counselor. Uh, and if you, as we talked, are like, well, but wait, which counselor is mine? We'll all help you answer questions and we'll direct you to whichever one of us you need to talk to. Um, but we're here and happy to help however we can. Um, we don't want any of you to feel like those little details don't matter because they clearly do. And this is our area of expertise. Let us share that with you. Ask and we'll help. And I believe there was one last question about where they could find the program of studies guide. Um, I believe Mr. Oldham shared the most updated version of that with your students maybe last week. Was it last week, Mr. Oldham? Yep, it would have been sent um, to their student email accounts. So tell them to go back, look for an email from Mr. Oldham about course selection. Uh, us referencing the updates from the board meeting tomorrow, there were just some language items, uh, not necessarily related to the courses and more in some of the front of the book uh, items that needed to be revised. And so the board is just updating that. And rather than posting one and then having to post a revised document, uh, we're just going to post the revised document at the end of the week once that's done. But all the pertinent information to student courses would have been in that uh, that was sent to students. Just have them check their student email account. Uh, it should be in there. Tell them to check their email, even if that's not what they want to see. They should always be checking their student email. Yes, and um, we will specifically be posting that program of studies guide um, on the high school website under the counseling page. Um, and then if you can look into the chat um, for any eighth graders, current eighth graders, um, she also shared uh, the most updated program of studies guide um, to date with them. So at this time, I think that wraps up our questions, um, unless anyone has any final questions or thoughts to share with us. Um, you know, we're appreciative that you all tuned in. I was so surprised to see about like 160 people um, tune in with us here in the Zoom. So that was a nice turnout. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and just one more piece, if any of you are still here, We've been telling your students this all year long in our email signatures and on this, this page, you'll see we have something called Calendly. Uh, it's an easy way for your student to click. It shows them our calendar and when we're available. They just click the time they wanna meet with us. It automatically creates a Zoom appointment and boom, uh, we meet. That's what we're doing a lot of. If they wanna do that, great. If you go into our email, like you get an email from us, you can click that link and as a parent, you can also click and sign up for an appointment with us if you want to have a phone call or a Zoom session. We're here to support you however we can. And again, thank you all for showing up uh, and being here tonight. Uh, we really appreciate your time. 
take care, everybody. Stay safe out there. And uh, we look forward to working with you and your kids. Have a good night.